Hey everybody, it's Mark again. And uh, in the last video I made of this uh, Cooner shadow box clock, I told you that the uh, movement was dirty and it needed cleaned. So that's what I'm going to do today. So we're going to start by taking the hands off. And the reason why I said it was dirty and it needed cleaned is because uh, it wouldn't tick and so that is my thought process behind that and I can see right now I'm gonna have to be gluing some hands sorry some numbers because the numbers are falling off and this movement has the uh, each Meckenbecker, sorry, this clock has the each Meckenbecker movement in it. And this hand should come right off. Which it does. But I've already got one, two, three, four numbers that I'm going to have to glue back on. So, uh, here's the movement. It's a East Meckenbecker one day movement. Um, next step is to take out the bellows, and the bellows are, um, held into place by a screw and a nail. This first bellow I'm taking out is the high note lift bellow. The high note lift bellow is the bellow that plays first. That way you get a coo coo versus a coo coo. And as always, I take and put a rubber band around at least one of these wires. That way I know that this wire goes with this bellow. And again, I'm using hair ties because the rubber bands seem to disintegrate after a period of time. Nice little pendulum that comes with this. So, taking out the other bellow. Now, this shadow box cuckoo clock does not have a door for the bird on it. It wasn't designed with one, so I don't have to disconnect the uh, cuckoo from the door. This uh, low note lift wire is the bellow wire. Didn't want to come off the low note lift wire, and I have to do some bellow work because this is uh, broken. Good thing I just got through ordering new bellows. Next step is to try to take off the uh, the hooks from the chains. I could easily do that on the uh, on the cuckoo side, but the uh, time side is up in the air, so uh, I can't get to it that easily. But what I can do is take the screws out and take the movement out. And then the movement will slide down enough to get for me to get to the um, the chain for the time side. Four screws, and again, that's why I use magnetic screwdrivers. Typically, this whole process, once you get good at it, should only take maybe an hour. 
And that is from start to finish. That is taking the movement out of the clock, taking it apart, uh, cleaning it, doing what you have to do to it, putting it back together. Now, if you got problems, like a bellow needs repaired, you got to add a little bit more time um, to uh, to your process. Um, but uh, you always, typically, like I said, when it's going right, it should only take about an hour from start to finish. So now I can slide the movement down and get to this chain. And I'm hoping that y'all are able to see everything I'm doing. Twist, uh, holding the uh, hook, twisting the uh, link, the very first link, and uh, getting it off. Now I be able to pull this chain out of the movement as long as it's not in a bind, which this one is. So I have to uh, get it out of a bind in order to take the chain out. There we go. And I always like to take the uh, Birch and Crutch um, Pendulum Leader wire off also. Because you don't want to bend it. You don't want to damage it. Set the case itself to the side after I get my last screw. And put it in my parts box. Like I said, this thing was made in 1986. And see how filthy it is? It's got dust all over the place. Now I want to take the uh, bird off. And it's also dirty. And it's plastic. And hopefully I won't break it. It doesn't need the wire to open up the door because it don't have a door on it. So now I'm going to take the uh, movement apart and get my plastic pipe here. This plastic pipe is let me get a tape measure so I can tell you the size of this pipe. I find it very handy. It's a coupling pipe where the outside diameter on one end is four and one eighth of an inch and the outside diameter on the other end is three and a half inch. So uh, inside diameter is three and three eighths on one side and two and three quarters on the other side. So it works very good where you can uh, uh, change each side to, uh, to uh, get it to work in. To work in. Next step is to take these uh, little Eclipse off to take the rack off. But before I do all that, I need to do a function test. And I've been doing too many function tests because my thumb, I don't know if you can see that, has got a cut on it from me doing function tests on clocks. So let me use my finger. Like I said, I put a lot of pressure on it. Even though it's dirty... Bird comes out, bird goes back in. One more time. Bird comes out, bird goes back in, it stops cuckooing. So the function test 
work great. I need to uh, be able to uh, get to the e-clip on the uh, minute wheel with minute pinion. So I'm turning the snail around so the notch in the snail allows me to get to this uh, e-clip on the minute wheel with minute pinion. And it has a really small e-clip on both the rack and the minute wheel with minute pinion. That comes off. The wire for the rack uh, uh, stop lever comes off. And then it's got e-clips on the inside of the lift lock lever and the rack stop lever. Uh, versus those compression clips, which I like these better because they're a lot e easier to deal with. Except for this thing, it's got a lot of dust in it. So now I can take the uh, a rack stop lever off the lift lock lever off the next thing i want to do is take the eight point star wheel off this one allows it to come off it's not compressed on it's got a screw that allows you to take it off and you want it it allows you to take the movement apart and put it back together easily Next step I want to do is take these four nuts off. And I like using a socket for this. That way I don't damage the nuts. When I can, I use the socket. Putting a pair of pliers on it, you could damage the nuts. And then after you're, you're, you get too much damage... You can't put them on or take them off that easily. And then pull it apart. You could take this off if you want. I'm going to go ahead and do it, but you don't have to. You just want to make sure it drops on its own easily. This is what stops your cuckoo from continuing to cuckoo. And if it gets stuck up in the air, it's not going to drop and your clock is going to continue to cuckoo. And uh, the only time I typically take them off is if it doesn't fall freely on its own, but because this thing's so dusty, I'm taking the thing off and uh, cleaning it up. It's got a bunch of uh, oil on it. Whoever oiled this thing last used way too much oil. It only takes a minute drop of oil to uh, clean these, uh, to oil these clocks. And I typically don't take the uh, gathering cam with gathering pen off. And I've got videos explaining why. So now I'm going to take a toothbrush to this and clean up all the hair. Take toothpicks and uh, uh, clean up all the holes. And so when I'm done with that, I'm going to put it in my uh, parts cleaner. And uh, I'm also going to check the great wheels to make sure that the uh, rack uh, ratcheting system is working properly on both great wheels. This is the time side great wheel, and I want to make sure that this plastic gear is not cracked. Sometimes they get cracked, and I have successfully repaired them with super glue and baking soda.
as long as you do it properly, the baking soda stays in this area and it doesn't affect it whatsoever. So uh, let me get back to you after I get this thing out of my uh, um, uh, cleaner. I got my cleaner set for uh, 35 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to put it in for 15 minutes. And I have a video on a homemade cleaning solution. So stand by. While the movement is being cleaned, it's a good time to go ahead and uh, uh, clean up the case. Um, for this project, I'm just going to use Old English oil. I'm probably gonna lose more numbers like I am and that's why I'm using old English oil because these numbers whoever glued these things on they've been glued on for a long time and uh, they're coming off the old English oil runs around in the hard to reach spots and i also have this brush right here that helps me reach the hard to reach spots you can use a toothbrush a little painter's brush whatever you want to use which helps you out. I do what I want. You do what you want. I'm just showing you what I do. I've been using Old English oil ever since I started collecting clocks and antiques. I never had an issue with it. It's readily available in most stores. And it's fairly cheap. And to me, it does a pretty good job. I like going all over the case. To include the inside of the movement especially when there's a lot of dust because that dust will get into sorry inside of the case because that um, dust will get in your movement and cause buildup of the fresh oil that you put in will cause it to stop and all your hard work is uh, wasted by a little bit of dust so uh if you watch my first video I said that these clocks came with and without music uh, this particular clock came without music uh, they can get quite expensive on eBay. I've seen one sell for about $400 to include shipping. And it did not have music. There was one on Goodwill recently. And uh, it sold for around, I want to say, $120. And it had music. And I'm surprised that it did not sell more. I paid uh, $65 to include shipping for this clock. I bought it off of Marketplace. And it's different from all my other cuckoo clocks. And I love different.
so uh, I'm gonna give this time to dry and then I'm going to uh, glue these numbers back on So like I said, I do have some fellow work to do, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now, off camera. I have a video that shows you how to do this, so um, if you're a subscriber to my channel, you can easily search in the search area while you're on my YouTube channel. I got the uh, bellow repaired. I got a little rubber band on it to, uh, to make sure the fold... Uh, memory happens. I would not recommend the Duro Super Glue to uh, repair your bellows. It doesn't work that well. Works great on the O-rings to repair O-rings for the musical boxes, uh, as I showed you in a video. But I wouldn't recommend it to uh, repair in the bellows because uh, it takes too long for the bellow material to stick, the Tyvek to stick. Cheap super glue works well. I prefer to use Loctite super glue, but um, um, uh, I gotta go to Walmart to get Loctite super glue. Um, or one store carries it in my town Walmart, by the way, is about 25, 30 miles away from my house. So uh, with price of gas, I just buy cheap super glue and it works. The next step is polishing the pivots. And I like polishing the pivots on the escapement wheel, the second wheel, and if it's an 8 day clock, the uh, third wheel. Um, the... Um, uh, you could uh, get away with this for maybe 50 clocks. Your 51st clock, you put everything back together uh, and it doesn't run. It's because there's a burr on the pivot. So while you got it out, go ahead and polish them up. You're not taking any any material away by doing this. I got an Arkansas whetstone basically here. It's not taking the material away. It's just uh, polishing the pivots themselves. I don't have a, a, a lathe for this job. So I use my Dremel when I can. And if I can't use my Dremel... I have a DeWalt that I use. So I'm going to finish doing that and then we'll get back to you. I have this attachment for my DeWalt and this uh, attachment closes all the way. That way you can um, put these gears into the uh, attachment and polish the pivot up. So I'm gonna finish doing that. Now I have a wire brush in my Dremel and I'm gonna take this wire brush to the pivots and to the uh, burge assembly itself to clean off any burrs that might be on it.
Now you could take a uh, stone and put it in your Dremel to clean the, the uh, birch and crutch assembly up if you want, but I, I, I choose to do a wire brush unless it's extremely rusty. Now the next step is put everything back together. Um, I've already put took toothpicks to all these holes and so uh, I'm gonna put it all back together. I like starting with the uh, time side great wheel. This plastic wheel goes against this plastic wheel and the minute wheel uh, minute arbor. Then the second wheel. And then the escapement wheel. And if you've never done one of these before, I would highly suggest taking pictures. Uh, some of the hammers, uh, the lift lock lever and the... Uh, sorry, the um, high note and low note levers came out during the cleaning process. I don't normally take these out. Um, some people do. I don't. What you do is totally up to you. Um, if you disconnect this brass wire, the brass wire is going to break on you. And so that's why I don't normally take it apart. Time side. Uh, before I do all that, I have to put that one piece I told you um, your clock will not stop cuckooing if uh now i gotta find it uh, so stand by and let me find it this piece right here and don't make me look up uh, what it's called um I'm going to take a toothpick to this hole, make sure there's no grime and stuff in it, so it falls freely on its own, and then uh, put it back on. See, it falls freely on its own, but I got to put the uh, E-clip on it. So let me find it. Still falls freely on its own. So now I can put the rest of these parts together. Again, time side, great wheel. Second wheel. Escapement wheel. And I I see a, a piece of dried up oil in the teeth. 
the pinions on the escapement wheel. So I want to clean that out. Remember I told you before a ultrasonic cleaner cannot get the hard to reach spots. So you want to be making sure and I didn't catch it the first time that you are looking at the hard to reach spots. Strikes that great will. The warning wheel, uh, the minute, again, dried up oil in the gears. It's called the third wheel with warning pin on it. Then they fly. And then this piece right here, which locks the cuckoo bird arm down and that lever that stops the, the cuckoo from cuckooing. You have to put this piece on. This arm right here goes underneath the third wheel with warning pin. You cannot put it the other way. It goes underneath. And uh, you want to hold the bird arm down so this pen catches the tab on the bird arm. That way it locks it in place. It's a lot easier to do it that way than to uh, fix it later. Then the uh, birds with crutch assembly. Then the rear plate. Putting the foot of the birch and crutch assembly into its hole and then sliding it on. The object here is to to uh, get your four nuts started. And I said started, not locked down. 